Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is crochet podcast number 81. And I have some finished objects to show you guys today. I'm super excited that I have some finished stuff for you guys. So the first thing that I want to talk about is my cocoa blanket. I finally finished the last month of colors. I just needed to put December in and then put a border on it. Now my goal was to have this done in July because I made a label for it. I embroidered a label that had all of the information on it and I put that it had finished in July. But I finished it in August, so that's a little bit of a, a white lie, but I'm not gonna make another one because it took me forever. I'm not a very good embroiderer. Is that a word? I'm not very good at it, so it really took me a long time. Now, I don't have the label. Danette has it. She is going to um, square it up and make it even and like make it be to where I can sew it on to the blanket. So here is my cocoa blanket all done and I will insert a picture here of it um, spread out. I have to, got a little nick on my fingernail here. You know when your fingernail, I'm gonna have to pause you guys for a second because this is not a little nick, it's a big nick. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that guys, but it was like a, a big nick. It was catching on the yarn. So where was I? Um, okay, so I told you guys that I finished it in August, but I had made the label for July. Um, well, you know, my plans was to have it done, but, you know, I lost my crojo and just didn't feel like um, crocheting for a while, so I didn't. But I only had one month left to put in, which was December's colors. And, oh, did I pop in a picture of it already? I probably did, but let's pop in a picture of it all laid out again. So, somewhere I made a boo-boo, and I don't know where it is. And I, I tried to find it, but I couldn't. But the colors were um, red, um, white, uh, purple, and yellow. I don't know if that's the order they went in. I think red was the first color, but the previous month I'd ended it on red, so I couldn't start it on red. But this is the white, and it is a Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn, and a drizzle me this or drizzle me crazy something like that um this purple right here is a red heart and it's amethyst um this yellow was just a random scrap of yellow that i picked up out of my bin here i don't know what it was it definitely feels red hearty and then this red is red heart cherry red so somehow i should have had two rows of this cherry red at the end but i only had one I don't know where I messed up, but I did somewhere because I should have had two. Now, I did put a border on it, and the border is in Red Heart, um, I love this yarn, Soft Navy. And I just done um, the a block stitch border. I had seen um, Terry on Yarn Joy Podcast had um, used um, a tutorial from Krista at the Secret Yarnery. And I had never done the block stitch before. This was my very first time. And I can't say that I didn't like it. You know, it was pre pretty easy to do. And I could watch TV while I was doing it. So I just done like all of the other colors. I done two rows of them. So I just stuck with two rows of the block stitch. And I think that it frames the blanket so good. I did not use this as a color that I didn't use anywhere throughout. I had thought about using black, but I think I used black somewhere in here. Yep, right there's black. And I thought, well, I've not used this navy, and it's a pretty color, so let's use it. So, yeah, I'm so excited that um, my first um, completed cow, I have joined other cows, but I have not completed them. I actually found an uncompleted one right here when I was looking for a hook the other day. It's my movie and stitch blanket, and I thought that I had finished it, but I have not, guys. It is still in this bin unfinished. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that though. I'm gonna get that all finished up because I'm so close to it being done. But this is my Coco's blanket. And if you don't know about the uh, cow, it was a cow that was hosted by Litza over at Coco's Crochet. 
and it was um, a half of a year. It was six months, but it um, used a calendar to pick the colors. So it was like random colors every um, month. So we done two months in one. So we done January and February the first month, March and April the second month, and so on until we got all the way to December and then it was done. So now the actual cow, if you follow it along, was a stitch sampler and each month you got um, the colors and a new stitch to do. But I decided to do the corner to corner stitch because I'd never done it. It's on my bucket list of things to do. I always wanted to make stuff using the corner to corner stitch but I'd never done it. So I thought, let's pull the trigger and this is the perfect thing to do. This cow was to make the corner to corner and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love how just like it's just all random colors, but they all go together. It's nice and soft and it's gonna be warm and cozy this winter when I wrap up in it while I'm watching all my murder shows. So that's a finished object. My next finished object is um, that cat gnome that I was talking about. So here it is, look how cute it is. Oh my goodness. Doesn't it just give you um, some Halloween vibes? I don't think that it was meant to be a Halloween gnome, but it very much gives me some Halloween vibes. Now this is a free pattern. And it is on, I got me some notes here. It's by Jen Hayes Creations. And of course, I will link everything down below. I'll have Litza's playlist for her cow down below. I'll have um, the gnome here down below. Anything that I talk about, I will try my very best to list down below. And all of the other podcasters that I mention, I'll list them down below. But I'm sure um, you guys are already friends with all of them because they're awesome. But I had this cat gnome almost complete. Like, its hat was all I had left. I had everything else. Um, and one thing about this cat gnome is pretty much all of your, you do all of the little bits first. Oh, here's his tail. I got his tail tucked up under his arm. I thought about putting his tail, like, sewing it to where it'd be like that, but... I'm giving it to somebody, so I'm gonna let them decide how they want to do the tail. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna tuck it up under his little arm here. Keep it out of the way. But um, I did not follow the pattern completely because as you guys know, I like to put a little gnome butt down in my gnomes. And all it is is just a cardboard disc, or I use foam board like from the Dollar Tree and just cut a circle and it just helps them like stand a little bit straighter and you can manipulate it to get it to be like exactly how you want. That's just a preference that I have. Of course, not everybody has their own preferences. That's my preference. That doesn't mean that it has to be that way, but because I like it like that, I decided to do that. So I did follow her pattern, except for when I got to the point where she goes up, I done like in the front loops. Yeah, I done the front loops. Let's see, how did I do that? Well, I done it like a pan pino body so that I could put the, so I'm doing it. I done it in the back loops. Okay, hold on just a second, guys. Um, I got a text from my mom and she's like, look what I got, so I gotta see what she got. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, if you are interested in what she had, it was my aunt's dog, Coco. She's a little chihuahua and she's just the cutest little thing in the whole wide world. She has the cutest little nose. You just wanna boop it every time that um, you go over and see them. She's a very affectionate dog. She loves to get belly rubs. So we all love Miss Coco. I call her Coco Licious. Oh, she's so gorgeous, I love her. But that's what my mom had. <laughs> but back to the cat gnome. Like I said, I'm trying to remember, I done it in, I left one of the loops open. I can't remember which one now. I've got like a little bit of brain fog. I don't have my coffee completely drunk yet. Oh, I'm a messy coffee drinker. <laughs> I'm a messy one. I 
drink my coffee. Um, but I left one of the loops open so that I could put the border that Pampino does. And I believe in Jen Hayes, hers has little feet that you can do. But I opted because, you know, I like mine to look like this. I opted out of that. But everything else is her pattern. So you do, like, even the tail is incorporated in as you crochet. So the only thing that I had to sew on, I believe, was the arms. I think the ears were incorporated in. Oh, and I had to sew this part on the nose and the little muzzle pad now this cat there's two versions there's a version that has like the beard or the version that has like the cat face and i went with the cat face because i thought it was just a super super cute and i never made one like that before so i done everything else according to her pattern and this is how it turned out um oh yep there's one thing i did on the hat that was different i didn't make the brim as big as hers only because I was running out of yarn and I was too lazy to come upstairs and get another skein of it. So I just thought, well, I'll just end it here. I did put like a little, um, like the same little simple stitch border here. I think it's like the crab stitch, but like modified, Pampino modifies it. I will leave a link down below if her YouTube is still uh, up with um, how she does that. And it's super easy and it makes such a beautiful little uh little detail on it okay so let's see what yarns did i use for this little cat so for the hat and just the little detail down here at the bottom which is you know optional you don't have to do that it is katona cotton used katona cotton all the way through you know, it's one of my favorite yarns. I would have to say it's probably my favorite yarn to work with. I used all Katona cotton and I did use a 2.25 millimeter hook. And it is a B hook. I used a clover, as one of those up there for it. And this is called Ruby. It is a like a red color. It's number 517. So the little pink in its nose and its ears and some little detail right here. I used, it's called Old Rose, number 408. The white for his muzzle is number 130, Old Lace. And those little black bits there were just like leftovers that I had. So I'm gonna say it was number 110, um, Jet Black. And then the gray that I used is called Anthracite number 501. So that is all that I done. Now, here is another thing. Um, the head isn't, the hat's not stuffed. It just it went that way and I thought it was super cute. But I didn't even sew this hat down, guys. It is just sitting on there and it, it looks great. And like I said, I did, um, I am give, giving this away. So I did leave, um, some yarn up inside of his hat here. See, boop, boop. So that if they wanted to um, sew the tail a different way um, or you know how they wanted it. And I decided not to, um, to sew the hat down because one, it stays like so good on here without even doing anything. And so it's like, why do extra work if you don't need to? But I thought, wouldn't this little booger be cute to do um, like different hats for, for like different holidays? Like, you know, you could do like a Halloween hat, uh, like make it a witch's hat and you could just, you know, interchange his hats or whatever. Um, the sun just brightened up. <laughs> um, so my lighting is probably gonna be uh, messy today. I'm sorry guys, I'm doing it in the middle of the day today well it's the morning time um whereas i usually do it at night but i thought this would be a great gnome to do that with like you could do a fall you could do winter it would be so cool so i left that option open for the person who's getting this in case they wanted to do something different and you know make him be different things and then you know even if they don't the hat's not going nowhere, guys, because these little ears, which are on the body, the hat just fits over them. 
So yeah, um, I really liked this. It was a lot of fun. Now, I don't know if you guys remember because it was like so long ago, but this was part, this cat was part of a, I was gonna do a 24 hour crochet-a-thon with, um, and uh, people gave me suggestions of gnomes that I could do. I had picked all of these gnomes from people's suggestions and I gathered up all of the yarn that I would need for them and put the yarn in little plastic bags. And I took some um, little project bags to work and asked Danette if she would like randomly just put some gnomes down in a bag and then I would pick. And it was a whole big thing that I was gonna do, but you know, I never done it. Well, I started it. And that was, you know, that cat was the first one that I picked. And that was Lori Kay had made the suggestion for the cat gnome. And, you know, told me where to find it at and stuff. And that's super cute. So I'm really glad she did because it is, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. But I still have all of those bags. And I have no clue what's inside of them because it's been so long. So I have three more bags. And I have no clue what's inside of them. Do you guys want me to pick one? and open it and let's um, do a little little surprise gnome here and see what we pick. Let's see, what do you guys think? We've got ice creams. These are all, I think, tea dottles bags. Oh, look, we have some gnomes and they're doing like all kinds of fun summer activities. Oh, and we have like some teapots and teacups. Boop, 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 boop. Well, I think since we are still in summer, that I'm gonna go with this cute little gnome summer bag here. And we will see what's inside of it. Like I said, these are little tea dottles bags. These are the mini maker bags. Um, she used to have a mini maker club. She no longer has that club, but she still does bags and stuff on her um, Etsy store, which I will link down below. Okay, guys, so here is all of the yarn. I don't think it's gonna be a summer gnome, do you guys? Let's see. Oops. Whoopsie daisies. Okay. Let's see. I wrote all the information on a card. You guys hear the train? Okay, so this is a Christmas reindeer gnome. <laughs> Look at that. It's a um, Pam Pino design. And Judy, Sharon, Lori, and Bella had suggested a Christmas or a reindeer gnome. So, yay! So, that's what I'm going to be working on, guys. That's going to be something that's upcoming. Super excited to um, start a new gnome. I really like doing gnomes. I feel like I haven't done any gnomes in a while. So, that's going to be something that's upcoming. Okay, let me find my list here so I don't forget anything. Oh, I got some Happy Mail, guys. Look at this. I got a postcard from Amy from Hooked on Wishing Crochet. Look at that. That is um, the Gothic Hall at Mercer Cabins in Murphy's, California. It says Mercer Caverns was discovered on September 1st, 1885 by Walter J. Mercer. The Gothic Hall is the largest known chamber in the caverns. The Gothic Hall measures approximately 234 feet long, 50 feet wide, and 58 feet high. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Amy, for um, sending me this card. I love getting postcards. Um, I think it's like a lost art. Like, you know, used to, everybody used to send postcards. I remember when I was younger, when we would go on vacation, I would always send postcards to my friends from wherever we were at. So thank you so much, Amy. I really love this picture. I mean, I couldn't imagine going in there. Could you imagine like how dark it would be? Ooh, I'd have to have me a flashlight. So thank you very much, Amy. I'm gonna put that on my refrigerator downstairs with all of my other postcards that I have. Let me consult my notes here. Um, I have been working on a diamond painting, guys. I brought it upstairs to show you guys my uh, progress. 
Now this is the first diamond painting that I ever purchased. It's a Harry Potter Hogwarts themed one. I've got like a little under halfway done on it. Ooh, look how shiny she is. So I bought this one a year or so ago, I think, from Amazon and was going to work on it and I never ever did. So I know like a lot of people on on like the, the in the Yarny community um, does the diamond paintings and I see why that's relaxing. I am in love with it. Um, I had me like a little station set up in the dining room over like in my favorite spot um, to set at the table. I have me like a little station. I have a couple different um, diamond painting pictures that I want to work on. Um, and I have like my little box with all my little diamonds in it. But it's relaxing. You throw on a um, audio book and you just, I mean like before you know it, like a couple hours has passed. It is very zen. I have found out that I like doing the diamonds like one at a time. I don't like those little ones that are like wide and you can put like five or six diamonds on at a time. I can never get my stuff to look right like that. And I find it to be frustrating and I don't want it to be frustrating. So I like just doing it one at a time. I did buy this awesome tool. I'll put in a picture. I meant to bring it up here, but I didn't from New Craft Day. Now I did purchase it. I didn't um, get it for free. Um, because, you know, I have partnered with New Craft Day a couple times and I really like partnering with them. But I did order um, a diamond painting and um, this like toolkit. And this toolkit is awesome, guys. Like if you like diamond painting, you will like this toolkit. I seen that Terry at Yarn Joy Podcast had, um, she had reviewed a like a toolkit like with different things in it and so that's what had it in my mind like let me look for one of those and let me try it out so that was super cool and I really really like it it feels good in your hand and it's like two-sided so you can have like your favorite like um, diamond picker upper and then on the other side I have the the straightener tool it's like a long like just piece of metal and you can use it to straighten up your little diamonds when you're done with your section so yeah i'm really enjoying working on my diamond painting so i do that a little bit every day i like doing it and while i'm doing my diamond paintings i like to listen to a book and i'm currently reading the only one left by riley sager i'll pop in a picture of what the book looks like riley sager is one of my um, must read authors um no matter what book it is i don't even have to know what it's about i'm going to read it um, he's uh, awesome. I like his stories. I like his twists and turns. So if you've never read anything by Riley Sager, I would say you should pick something up because every book that I've read has been at least, you know, a four um, star or above. And this one right here is sort of like, um, what's that? What's that girl that the axe girl? What was her name? I can't think of her name, but you know, she supposedly killed her family with an ax. Well, this is like, sort of like that. You got this girl, Lenora, who, um, her family was all murdered back in the day, like in the twenties. And everybody suspects that Lenora did it, but there was like no proof. So they couldn't really charge her with anything. And now, you know, it, it's like, goes from the twenties when Lenora was young, 17 and to like the 80s where Lenora is older and she needs a caregiver to take care of her. So we meet her caregiver whose name is Kit, who has just recently come through um, a tragic situation that is similar to what Lenora came through in her past. And that's where I'm at. So I didn't give anything away. So if you want to um, pick this up from your library, I would highly suggest you do so. But if you've never read Riley Sager and you want to, I would suggest starting with his first book called The Final Girls. It was like, it was the bomb. It was the bomb. It's been my um, favorite one that he's wrote out of all of them. It's my favorite one. Okay, 
So, enough about the book. Mmm. Guys, I went to the chiropractor last weekend. And my chiropractor is not in my town. It's about like 40 minutes away in a town called Auburn. And whenever I'm in Auburn, I always go and get some bird food at the Ace Hardware. There's a Dollar Tree there, and I always stop at the Dollar Tree if I need something. And there's also a Salvation Army, which is never open when I'm there because my appointment is always at 8. But because I had to go to the Ace Hardware and I had to go to the Dollar Tree, by the time I got out of the Dollar Tree, the Salvation Army was open. So I was like, hey, I'm just going to go. And I'm going to show you guys what I got. So hold on just one second. Look at all this yarn, guys. Oh my goodness, I got so much yarn. It was, almost all of these are like brand new. Brand new. Some of them have like, maybe a little bit out. Like, but I don't even know. I think they're all new. Except for the ones I've used. Already tapped into them. <coughs> so these were each $2.99 a skein. It's all Red Heart, um... Bernat, Karen, and I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. So, I got this um, purple, red heart. I love this yarn in amethyst. I did use a little bit of it on my blanket over there. Um, but literally, look at it, brand new, $2.99. I got this cherry red, $2.99. Yes, I tapped into it too for that one one little square that I done on my blanket. So this is one that I think was opened and used, but it was wrapped back up. And it's Red Heart Super Saver in um, Pretty in Pink. So I think that it, it was used for something, but like it was wrapped back up. Oops, I'm tossing them over onto my bed. Here is Red Heart Super Saver in medium purple. I think like a little bit may have come out. No, I don't even think so, guys. Yeah, I don't even think so. I think it's brand new. Now, some has been gone out of this one, but not a whole lot. This is True Gray from Bernat Super Value. I've never used a Bernat Super Value before, so, yeah. True gray. Look at this Mac Daddy. Caron pound of one pound. I was gonna say pound of blood, but no, it's Caron one pound in the color lilac. $2.99. Yes, $2.99. They made no difference in the big jumbo ones versus the little ones. Here's another Bernat Super Value, and it's called Lavender. I don't think anything's been used out of it. We've got two of the Hobby Lobby's um, Limelight. Brand new. Brand new. I was so excited, guys. When I was going, I was just like piddling around. And I got to that section, and I was like, I, I gotta go get a cart. <laughs> I mean, I have to get a buggy because I'm taking every bit of this yarn, even though I don't need any yarn, because I'm gonna have to buy a storage tote. All of mine are full. But how can you pass that up at $2.99? I mean, even if I decide I don't want it and I give it away to somebody, I mean, $2.99, you cannot pass it up. Okay, so we've got a Red Heart Super Saver, brand new, petal pink. I think this is a petal pink too. Yes, another petal pink, brand new. Um, this pink is called Baby Pink. I don't think that I have any petal pink or this pink. I think I have like some scraps of the, the hotter pink color. Here is a Red Heart Super Saver. And so I do not see it. It looks like a navy. Um, it kind of looks like this one. Maybe. No, yeah, that's a little bit different. But this one's soft navy. I used this big, big old Super Saver Jumbo one. On, it was brand new, but I used it on my blanket. But there's this blue that's unknown. 
and then this jumbo that is soft navy. I was super um, surprised to see like the big ones be um, like the same price. And then we have just a white here. And I can't, I don't think this one's been used either. Whew. And I also got one more thing. It's downstairs, I already um, hung it up. Let's see, some of the stickers are falling off. Two ninety nine. Um, I bought this shelf. I'm gonna pop in a picture of it. I'm in love with this shelf. I was so happy to find it because when I first picked it up, I was like, "What in the world is this? Why is this bar across there?" And it's to hang a blanket on. I'm like, "That's perfect because I'm a crocheter and I crochet blankets when I can get them finished." So as you can see the cocoa blanket is hung up on it and i'll probably leave that hung up there for a little bit until i start using it but i need me like a fall themed blanket to put up there i have a halloween um blanket that i crocheted that will definitely go up there in october but yeah so i was super excited with that and that one was a 3.99 i think guys i might need to wash my hair today it's looking a little little greasy at the top um i got some mail i did not know that this was coming but this was because i participated in um t doddle's um mini maker club um this was like the extra bag that um she um makes for the club like if you do the full year um, I actually forgot all about it, but she sent that and I thought that was the cutest little pouch. It's using scraps of, you know, the fabric that she used throughout and it is lined on the inside here. Let me take this stuff out. <laughs> Super cute. So I was so excited to get that because I was not expecting it. But it said, your 2021 Mini Maker Club Extra Pouch has finally arrived. Thank you so much for your patience, and I hope you enjoy. Christy at Tea Dottles. And thank you very much, Christy. I really, really love it, and I can't wait to use it. I did make a purchase from an Etsy store called, let's see what it's called. It's called Capital Maker on Etsy. Um, and come in this little, little tube or little thing, but it's stitch markers, guys. And look at them. They're so cute. I've got the pumpkin McDonald's Halloween pail, and it's on a lever back. Now, the cool thing about, um, let's see, I think I got two of each. Yeah, I got two pumpkins, is you can choose what style of hardware I guess that you want on it you can either get the complete rings like that knitters use or you can get the crab claw things that you know you pull that little lever down or these little lever backs I got two of the ghost pails there's the other one and I got two of the witch pails oops oops turn around the other way there you go got two of those and they are on the lever backs here, which is my favorite. And I come across them and I was super excited. They have such cute ones on there that I'm definitely going to be getting some more um, because I like stitch markers. I like to make stitch markers too. I haven't made any in a while. Although I did get some, some supplies. You guys want to see them? Um, I was at Hobby Lobby. And I seen these cute little gummy bears and I thought, oh, those would make cute stitch markers. And I think it was like 50% off of the Hello Happy brand. So I got those. Now I thought these were super cute too. And it was like 50% off of the, the metal gallery. But it's like tape cassettes from back in the day. Those are super cute. I like those. And then I just got, picked up some hardware because I don't, I don't have any hardware. I'm all out. Mm. I did also go to Joanne when I was in the Fort Wayne at the Hobby Lobby. And I got a three skeins of yarn. Bloop. It's that glow in the dark. Yarn by Lion Brand. 
and guys, it really does glow in the dark. So I can't wait to use this. I want to make it like a little ghost and yeah. So it says it's a number four weight yarn. This is tiny reading back here. It's 1.75 ounces at 50 grams, which is 71 yards or 65 meters. It's a medium four weight yarn. It recommends you use a 5.5 hook or a five millimeter needles which is an eight in us or an i9 in the crochet hook um i don't know what it says don't iron it you can put it in water of 105 fahrenheit 40 celsius but this color is called natural ecru um and actually it's the only color that they had so there was not anything else but it's called Glow, Lion Brand Glow. So I paid, it was $6.99 a skein for these, and that's a lot for such a tiny skein. But it was buy two, get one free. So I went ahead and done that because I was wanting it, and it was $6.99 on Amazon. So I thought it would be cheaper to get it at Joanne and do the $6.99 at two and get one free. So yeah. It's a little pricey, guys, a little pricey. It's definitely a yarn to buy on sale. So I can't wait to get that all used. Guys, I think that's it on my little list here. I don't have anything else to talk about. Upcoming, I am gonna be working on my diamond painting. Um, I need to find a tote to put all this new yarn in. I'm gonna work on that reindeer gnome. What are you guys gonna be working on? Um, like, what are you guys currently, what's on your hook? What are you guys gonna be doing um, this upcoming week? I want to um, do a Hooked on Murder, so maybe we can hang out and um, crochet together a little bit. Um, yeah, so let me know down below what you guys are up to, what you've been working on, what you've been reading, what you've been, you know, doing. It don't have to be, you know, about crochet. It can be about anything that you guys have been up to just let me know what it's been and i think that's all i got today guys so i will see you guys in the next video bye